Medicare uses different terms to mean the same thing and similar terms to mean completely different things. For years, you've probably had an HR department that's helped you with your health care options, and now you are the HR department. Medic medical offices speak in generalities, as does Medicare, if you have the time to call them. Your friends, neighbors, and family members have very strong opinions, um, possibly even opposing ones, about what you should be doing in the Medicare space. And your mailbox is stuffed with loads of information that you neither want nor need. I think you'll agree that Medicare can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Hi, my name is Dan Paterka. I'm an independent broker, um, an agency owner, and a member of Hogue Senior Services team. Our offices are here in Newport Beach, and we handle all kinds of questions regarding Medicare at no cost to you. Um, we offer all the options that are available to Medicare beneficiaries, and we're going to talk about some of those in just a minute. We provide advice on how to leave employer group health plans, how to sign up for Medicare, uh, the forms that you might need after you turn 65 and if you're still working, and many other things related to Medicare. Um, we're going to talk about the basics of Medicare today. If you want a more advanced class, then uh, attend next week when we talk about uh, the more specific uh, things, that the options that are available to you under Medicare. There's a lot to unpack today, so let's get started. Oh, by the way, um, I'm ably assisted here today by my friend and colleague, Liz. So if you have any questions, please put them into the chat box and she'll forward them to me and, and we'll um, field those questions. Um, I may answer them in the course of this uh, live stream, so uh, hold tight and we'll move forward. A quick overview of our presentation. Um, we have general information. We're going to do a quick summary of Medicare. We're going to look at the parts of Medicare. So there's the summary, and then we'll do a deeper dive into each of the four parts of Medicare. Um, there are entry points into the Medicare system, and we call those election periods. Uh, we're going to look at the coverage options, which will sort of tie everything together. And then um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the changes to Medicare in 2023. Uh, and then at the very end, we'll leave you with contact information if you have any further questions or um, if you just want to chat. Okay, so general information. You are considered to be a beneficiary under Medicare's rules. Um, you've paid into a system through your working career, and now you're eligible for Medicare benefits. So that makes you the beneficiary. You are not the only one getting mail if you're turning 65 or if it's a certain time of year. Actually, it seems to be year-round now. So um, I will show up to somebody's, somebody's house and they'll pull up an orange crate and it will be full of information, mail that they've received from different carriers. There are really only two agencies that you can trust to give you reliable, if sometimes vague, information. One of them is the Social Security Administration and the other one is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In true government fashion, um, they've managed to abbreviate an acronym, and so now instead of CMMS, you have CMS. We will call them, um, for our purposes, Medicare. Medicare is charged with the oversight and regulation of our industry, and they want to make sure that whether you're 65 or 105, no one is taking advantage of you and selling you something that you don't want or need. Um, to that end, there have been a, um, a number of ads. I'm sure you've seen them. They have featured J.J. Walker and Joe Namath, um, really celebrities that are urging you to call these 800 numbers where they will give you everything for free. Those um, led to a number of complaints because the plans didn't apply to all areas, but they were national ads. And so people were calling in, getting um, turned over to uh, 10 or 12 different agents as leads, and then those 10, 12 agents would call you multiple times uh, to try and sell you a policy. So um, from now on, Medicare, actually from uh, October 1st last year on, Medicare required all calls to be recorded. So if you call an agent, you can expect to hear a recording or, uh, or to be told that you're going to be recorded. Okay, so they are just trying to protect you, but it is an onus for everybody. A little bit about sales agents and brokers. An agent is uh, somebody who works for a carrier, let's say Ford Insurance Company. You're going to get the entire Ford line of products, but you may not get all the products that are available to you, um, and you may not have a comparison of products. So if you're sure that you want to go down that line, 
by all means, go ahead and call uh, the insurance carrier and, and an agent will take care of you. A broker is somebody who represents clients. We have um, a number of different uh, plans that are available to you and we can make comparisons and so on. Uh, when you meet with a broker or an agent on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they're going to ask you to sign what's called a scope of appointment. It's a standard form. Um, we, we call it an SOA and the form says beneficiary signature. You say what you want to talk about in terms of Medicare and after our discussion today you'll know which ones you want to talk about, um, which items you want to talk about. It is um, limited and so that's why they call it a scope as far as um, what the agent can talk to you. So if you don't check off all the boxes, they're only going to be able to talk to you about sort of one thing. Um, be not afraid of those forms. They're standardized and um, an agent will ask you or a broker to sign the form before they can proceed. Um, we are paid by the insurance companies that we represent. So no matter where you go, if you go to a, a telephone um, call number or if you come to a broker um, or if you work with an individual, um, that person gets paid. Um, so you can get from a broker advice at no cost or you can do your own homework and, and call a carrier directly. We're licensed by the states in which we operate and we are certified by the companies that we represent so that you always have the most current information. Medicare is health insurance for people who are uh, 65 years of age and better. You, if you could be under 65 with certain disabilities, that's two years or more with a disability, you would be automatically enrolled into Medicare. Uh, but you could also be any age with end-stage renal disease, that is um, renal disease that requires dialysis. The Social Security Administration, one of the two agencies that I told you you could trust um, with reliable and sometimes vague information, they're charged with the enrollment and billing for Medicare. Certain parts of Medicare have a premium associated with them, and so um, Social Security will collect that premium. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Medicare, um, is charged with rules and plan designs, and those change a little bit every year. At the bottom of the page, you can see um, a Medicare card, we call it the red, white, and blue card, and you can see this individual has his name listed there. Um, there's uh, an indicator that there's a Medicare number. It's not really a number, it's um, characters and numbers, so um, it's an 11 character, uh, it's letters and numbers, so it's an 11 character configuration. This person has the basic uh, parts of Medicare, Part A and Part B, at which we'll look in a moment. Here we are. Part A is considered acute, um, I think of it as acute care. It's called hospital insurance by Medicare. You're automatically entitled to Part A. You've paid into a trust fund through your working career. Um, your your um, eligibility goes with your spouse if, if they were not working while you were. And so um, you're automatically entitled to Part A and you have those benefits available when you become a beneficiary. Part B is uh, known as medical insurance by Medicare, and it's the basic stuff. It's the day-to-day, day -to -day, not acute. Um, you do not have to sign up for Part B if you don't want to. However, if you don't, when you should, you may get penalized, and that penalty will go with you for the rest of your life. So we want to avoid um, not signing up for Part B if you should. Part B has a, uh, an income-related adjustment so if you make over a certain amount of money, you're going to pay more for Part B. Part B carries a premium. A and B together are known as original, straight, or traditional Medicare. And you can only obtain A and B through the Social Security Administration. No agent or broker can sign you up. They can help you, um, but they cannot just go in and sign up for Medicare for you. Part C is an alternative to original Part A and Part B. Um, you don't have to sign up for a Part C plan if you don't want to. Part C plans are known as Advantage plans, um, and they are group plans. You're joining a group of people. Part D is subsidized access to drug insurance coverage, the type of uh, medications or drugs that you would get at a retail outlet, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, so on. Um, you don't have to enroll for Part D either, um, but like Part B, if you don't, when you should, you may get penalized, and that penalty goes with you for the rest of your life. Part D also has an income-related adjustment, and um, so you just need to be aware of that 
B and D are very similar in those respects. A little bit deeper dive, part A, um, it includes a hospital stay if you go. Um, you will have a $1,600 deductible and um, that applies each and every time you go for something different. So gallbladder in January, you stay in the hospital. Ankle fracture in June, $1,600 more. Uh, appendicitis in November, another $1,600, so close to $4,800 for those three separate visits. One of the issues with original Medicare A and B is that there's no upper limit to the amount of money that you'll spend uh, on your health care. So we look for ways to cover that, and that's where brokers and agents come into play. Um, if you go to a skilled nursing facility after you get out of the hospital, uh, you will pay $200 a day after the first 20 days. So um, they'll allow you to stay for almost three weeks. Um, you need to show continuous improvement, or they'll send you home. You only get 100 days in a skilled nursing facility, so it's not long-term care. It is just designed to get you back up and on your feet. And again, you need to show continuous improvement. Part A includes hospice if a doctor orders it, at home health care if a doctor orders it. It's far less expensive to take care of you at home than it would be for you to occupy a hospital bed or a skilled nursing facility. So um, that might be uh, one of the elements of Part A for you. Uh, part A includes after the first three pints of blood. So you can see that um, Part A is really uh, catastrophic coverage. It's a safety net. And uh, again, you've paid into a trust fund, so that's available to you uh, should you need to draw on it. Part B includes everything else, including ambulance rides, um, doctor office visits, including specialists, outpatient hospital services, that's colonoscopies, mammograms, and things of that nature, labs, diagnostic testing, durable medical equipment, hospital beds, oxygen, things of that nature. Um, for Part B, there is a small deductible. It is not a per event deductible like the hospital stay is. Um, it is just right up front, $226, and after that, you have uh, an 80-20 coverage. Now, how would that work? Well, let's say you've paid your deductible, you go to see a specialist, and that specialist wants to charge you $200 for the, for the visit. Um, the specialist sends the bill to Medicare, and the Medicare says, we only allow you, specialist, to charge $100 for this visit. Uh, here's $80 from us, our 80%, and you can get the other $20 from, from Dan, the beneficiary. Um, the balance, that extra $100, has to be written off. The, the physician cannot charge you for that. Um, that applies to anybody under Part B. So there's no um, balance billing is what it's called. Uh, there are some practitioners um, or providers under Part B who will charge you more. Um, they'll tell you, I don't have a contract with Medicare, but I can bill Medicare for you. Um, Notable among those are anesthesiologists and emergency room doctors. Now, um, the Part B excess charge can be up to 15% over the allowed amount. And so 15% uh, of a lot is probably going to be a lot of money. So you need to be aware that that Part B excess charge may exist. How does it work? Um, you go in for a scheduled surgery, right? It's not emergency. You go in for a scheduled surgery. You're fasted. You're uh, laying on the gurney. Um, you're shaved, you're ready to go, and the anesthesiologist walks in and he says, hey, I'm going to take care of you. I'll see you on the other side. By the way, though, I do not take Medicare. I will bill Medicare for you. And in return for that favor, I am going to uh, charge you an administrative fee. That's what they'll call it. And it can be up to 15% over the allowed amount. Just sign right here, please. Uh, it, you don't, if you don't like that deal, we can reschedule the surgery. Today, I'm the only person here, so it's going to be, you know, how you want to do it. Um, most people opt to go ahead and do the surgery. So that's Part B. Now, for Part B, as I mentioned, you will have a premium. And this year, it's $164.90 a month. That's the base premium because, remember, I also mentioned that there's an income-related adjustment. So $164.90 is the base. Anybody who makes less than $97,000 um, as an individual or $194 married filing jointly um, from 2021, you will pay a little bit more for your, well, you're going to pay more for your Part B. The income-based surcharge can be up to $560.50 a month. Um, and again, it affects those with income over $97,000. Uh, your premium will be deducted from Social Security if you're drawing Social Security income. But if not, you will be billed every three months. 
and there may be a true up month where they um, try to get you on the same billing cycle as everybody else. Uh, Part C, Medicare Advantage. These are the group plans that I had talked about. Um, these are the alternative to original Medicare. You have to continue to pay for once the 164.90 for your Part B premium or whatever it is, uh, income adjusted. And then Medicare will pay a carrier to provide benefits to you through a network and a primary care physician. Most of them are HMOs, but PPOs are becoming more popular. And of course, with a PPO, you would not need a, a primary care physician, a PCP. Um, the next line applies to HMOs. So you pick a primary care physician, they coordinate your care. They have all your, um, your electronic, medic electronic medical records and um, are able to communicate with the specialists in their network. Um, your primary care is always going to be in a specific geographic area, and that is the county in which you reside. Um, but you will have worldwide coverage, um, both urgent and emergent, uh, obviously, wherever you go. So um, urgent care is, um, well, let's talk about emergent care. Emergent care is life-threatening. I've been in a car accident. I have uh, chest pain. I don't know what's going on, um, but I, I might die. That's emergency. Urgent care is, I've cut my finger. I, um, I'm on a blood thinner. I can't get it to stop bleeding. Obviously, you're not going to die from that, but um, it does need to be taken care of, and so that's, that's more of the urgent care. Ear infections when you're traveling, those types of things are urgent care. Um, you pick a, a plan based on benefits, um, cost sharing, and, and of course, the network of doctors. It's really important to make sure that all of your doctors are in that network. Um, the Advantage plans, the benefits are really good, and they have extra um, what they call lifestyle benefits within them, so th they're fairly popular. Uh, most of the uh, Advantage plans, the group plans, include prescription drug coverage, so you wouldn't need to look for a separate drug plan. Separate drug plans, Part D. This is coverage for outpatient prescriptions. Um, there are a number of plans available. Um, they vary by state. In California, there are 26 available to you. Um, and Medicare, which is in charge of uh, rules and plan designs, they know exactly how much each prescription drug plan costs across the United States. Um, and so they, they sort of sum them up and do a weighted average, and they determine that the average cost of a drug plan uh, the premium, average premium, is $31.15 for 2023. This changes a little bit every year, but they use it as the basis for a penalty if you don't sign up when you should. Um, there's an IRMA, uh, an income-related monthly adjustment amount for prescription drug plan enrollees as well. <clears throat> and so you could pay up to $76.40 for um, a prescription drug plan in addition to the premium if IRMA affects you. The premiums vary by state and plan. Most of the, um, the PDPs, the prescription drug plans, they include mail order. And as I mentioned before, a lot of the Part C group plans include uh, prescription drug coverage, so you wouldn't need to get a separate drug plan. A little bit about uh, supplement plans. These are known as individual supplement plans because they apply just to you. You're not joining a group. You're staying with original Medicare. and so. Um, we talked about those gaps that Medicare has, the $1,600 deductible, um, the 226 deductible for Part B, 20% coinsurance, possible Part B excess charges, $200 a day after the first 20 days at a skilled nursing facility. The supplement plans will fill in the gaps for Medicare. And so um, people find these to be popular because original Medicare does give you a lot more flexibility than say an HMO plan would or even a PPO plan would. Um, you would get care from any doctor that takes Medicare. Um, there are premiums associated with the supplement plans, and they are beyond what you pay for Part B of Medicare, so it's an additional cost. And they range in price uh, depending on zip code and your age. Uh, let's see. If you're thinking about a supplement plan, an individual supplement plan, you'd want to shop. Um, the things that people consider are cost, um, reputation of the company, underwriting, and stability. Um, cost is, speaks for itself. Some plans will charge you more and some less, even though you're in the same zip code and the same age, um, just based on their claims experience and um, other actuarial factors that are kind of mind-numbing, so we won't go into those. So cost, um, the plans are standardized, so if you go for one that's lettered, let's say, G, um, the G will be provide you with the same benefits 
uh, whether it's with Aetna, Blue Shield, United Healthcare, um, or Anthem. Okay, so um, it's the same benefit no matter where you go, so cost can be a big factor. Uh, reputation. I had this company um, for my mom when she was ill. They treated her really well. I want to go with that company. And I'm willing to pay a little bit more if that's the case. Um, underwriting is a series of medical questions that supplement carriers will ask you if you're outside of a certain window. And that window is within six months of obtaining Part B. Um, they can do one of five things. They can um, welcome you to the family. Hey, Dan quoted you a price. It's good. Um, you know, here we go. Um, the second thing they can do is they can make you wait um, three to six months, and if anything comes up with regard to question number six, they may not cover it. They may say, um, look, you're taking a couple of medications here, and that's actually going to present a greater risk to us, so we're going to charge you more than what Dan said. Um, they can do two and three, which is charge you more and make you wait, or they can do the fifth option, which is we decline to offer you coverage at this time. Um, go away, come back in a couple of years, and when you're well, we'll talk about it again. So um, we try to avoid that if we can and just try not to subject ourselves to underwriting at all. Stability is a, a carrier's pricing policies. How, um, how quickly do the prices rise? Do they plateau at a certain age where you're not paying any more as a 72-year-old uh, than you are as an 84-year-old? Um, those are considerations that we all um, that we look at when we talk about supplement plans. Um, we talked about underwriting. These plans are considered to be portable. You can take them anywhere in the United States. You're not um, restricted to your geographic area, your county in which you reside. You can go anywhere that a Medicare doctor um, works and, and, um, and will accept Medicare. So they work for snowbirds, people who have homes on two are happy wanderers, and you ha hop in your RV, go see the grandkids in all the different states. This could work well for you. Um, neither original Medicare A and B nor individual supplement plans include prescription drug coverage. This is where you would pick up a Part D plan and possibly be um, subject to the IRMA as well as a, a premium associated with a Part D plan. Entry points into the Medicare system or election periods. There are four main ones and I've added a fifth one today as, as you can see. So um, the, the biggest one is the initial election period and it's the seven months uh, surrounding your birth month. It's a window of opportunity during which you can sign up for A, B, C, or D. Um, you have to take advantage or you should take advantage of this initial election period if you don't have anything else in place like employer coverage. If you have employer coverage, you do not need to take advantage of your IEP um, and you won't be penalized because employer coverage, at least if three conditions prevail, um, is a special election period when you decide to leave. That is the next one that's coming up. So special election period, leaving employer coverage. Again, you can sign up for any of the parts, A, B, C, or D. Um, but there are three conditions that need to prevail in order for you to take advantage of this SEP. You have to be actively employed. So if you retire and you've still got employer coverage, that does not count. COBRA does not count currently. Um, you have to be covered under the employer's plan. Silly, but some people say, well, I had it available and I didn't avail myself. So um, you have to be covered. And there have to be greater than 20 employees. So those three things exist for you or your spouse then you can stay on the employer plan and when you decide to come off there are a couple of forms to fill out um, in order for you to avoid penalties. So that's a special election period. Annual election period runs from October 15th to December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, every year. Um, and this is when you can change or choose a Part C or a Part D plan. Okay, so that's your window for Part C or Part D. Um, the next one is the general election period. Just, just try to delete in your mind that Medi-Cal because that's not the case. The general election period is for someone who's forgotten to sign up for Part B or did not sign up for Part B, Bravo, when they should have done. Um, you may be subject to a penalty. Um, this is if you forgot or neglected to get. So if you go on to COBRA, and you go for more than eight months without signing up for Part B, you will probably be subject to a penalty. Um, the way this general election period works 
is that it runs from January 1st to March 31st, the entire first quarter. If you sign up in January, it starts in February. Um, there may be a penalty, as I mentioned, and then it may stick with you for the rest of your life. The, uh, the last one is loss of Medicaid. And the only reason I bring this up is because uh, during the public health emergency that started in March 2020, um, there was a, an, an emergency legislation that was enacted. And what it did is it said, we're going to have continuous enrollment for Medicaid. So um, Medicaid is usually subject to income and asset uh, limits. So um, they had continuous enrollment. They never went back to check and see if you were eligible for Medicaid if you signed up for it. As uh, part of the uh, of another act that happened in December, th those things were untethered. So the public health emergency and the Medicaid um, continuous enrollment were un were untied. They call it the unwinding, which sounds a lot like an M Night Shyamalan movie, but it it has to do with um, Medicaid now redetermining whether or not the people who are on Medicaid are eligible. So if anybody in your family or you know of someone who's on Medicaid, um, April 1st was the date at which states could start redetermining. They have up until I think it's December of this year to determine or redetermine whether people are eligible for Medicaid or not, but a lot of people are probably going to lose Medicaid um, if they started working again or things of that nature where their their income and their assets rose above the thresholds for which you were eligible for Medicaid. Okay, so that is another entry point. Loss of Medicaid allows you to join a Medicare Advantage plan um, anytime during the year. All right, after you get A and B, uh, you could choose one of three ways to use your Medicare. You could stick with original Medicare, lots of flexibility, right? You can go to any doctor that takes Medicare. Um, it's fee for service. You go to the doctor or you go to a provider, they provide you with the service, they bill Medicare, and they get paid for that individual service. There are gaps in, in original Medicare, like we talked about, the $1,600 uh, deductible, the 200 after uh, 20 days for skilled nursing facility, 226 deductible, 20% coinsurance, possible Part B excess charge of, of 15%. Um, the other two options will fill in the gaps, and that's where, again, it, agents and brokers come in. You need a separate drug plan for original Medicare because it does not include prescription drug coverage. So um, that's option one. Option 1A, because it only works with original Medicare, is known as a supplement or a Medigap plan. These are individual to you, so they're also fee-for-service. You pay extra for it, um, and uh, there are various coverage levels. Now, they're lettered as well, but they have nothing to do with the parts of Medicare A, B, C, D. Um, they are lettered A through N, and if it helps you to remember, um, they are plans, not parts. So plan A, plan F, and so on. F is the most comprehensive. It's not available to everyone, only those who are eligible for Medicare before January 1st, 2020. Um, and now the G plan is the most popular one. It will cover everything just like the F plan, except for one thing. And that one thing is the $226 deductible. Now, no matter what that deductible becomes, uh, you'll be on the hook for it, but it's still a, a good option for most folks. Okay, um, because Medigap plans do not include prescription drug coverage, you would have to pay for a separate prescription drug plan. So it really, of the options, uh, it's the most expensive way to go, but it does give you the most flexibility as well. Medicare Advantage plans, these are the group plans like we talked about, HMO, PPO, government contracts with a carrier to pr provide for your health care through a network. Um, you select a PCP in the case of an HMO, and then you have all the benefits of Medicare plus additional lifestyle benefits like uh, transportation, gym memberships, over-the-counter benefits, and things of that nature. Okay, so this is a, sort of an info infographic of the same thing. Uh, original Medicare, A and B, separate prescription drug plan. If you want, you can get a supplement plan under 1A, and that will fill in the gaps of Medicare. will cost you extra for that. Um, for the supplement plan, that is, or option two, Medicare Advantage ties everything together. All the benefits that you would have received under A and B, lifestyle benefits, and prescription drug coverage in most instances. Um, changes to Medicare, re recent ones. 
um, the monthly premium has gone down from 170.10 to 164.90 this year. The IRMA threshold has gone up, so um, it it takes more money to be subjected to an income-related adjustment. Um, as mentioned, 97,000 is a single, 194 married filing jointly. This is tied to AGI, not to your income. So you would have to look at your tax return, line 11, and um, that will at least point you in the right direction. But it's AGI, it's not your income. So even if you're not drawing any income, you've got IRA distributions, you might have sold a residence, things of that nature. Medicare will look at all of that and consider that as part of your income. Part B deductible is now 226. Last year it was 233, so it's actually gone down a little bit, unprecedented, but um, it'll, it will go back up again, I'm sure. Vaccines are now covered, especially COVID, except in the state of Florida for some reason. Um, insulins are available to you for $35 a month. Um, if you have surprises on your Medicare Advantage drug costs, your doctors have moved to a different medical group and you would like to change plans or change medical groups, you can do that, uh, while well, changing medical groups, you can do that any time during the year with your Medicare Advantage plan, but if you don't like the plan itself, um, you can change during what they call the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which goes through March 31st. But again, you can change medical groups any time during the year, any month. Um, on April 1st, 2023, as I mentioned, the Medi-Cal renewals and redeterminations, those uh, are, they can start to do the redetermination. So that may affect you as well. Coming changes. In 2024, um, because of the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, once you're in catastrophic coverage, which is one of the levels of prescription drug coverage, it's the, the ultimate level, um, you won't have any drug costs. That's in 2024, not this year. Um, so you would have to spend about $3,250 in drug costs to get to catastrophic coverage. And um, at that point, you wouldn't have any costs in 2024. In 2025, uh, through the IRA, the Income Reduction Act, uh, Re Inflation Reduction Act, um, the total cap on drug costs will be $2,000. So that's quite a drop from the 1250. Um, both of those exclude premium. So if you're paying for separately, separately for a prescription drug plan, um, that is not included in the, that $2,000. So um, this is my information, my contact information. If you have any questions, we really have just covered sort of the basics of Medicare. But if you have further questions, I'm happy to, to field them right now. And if you want, go ahead and give us a call. Do we have any questions, Liz? Yes, we do. Thank you. Can you explain Part G again? OK, so um, we're, we're mixing terms here. Um, G is a plan. Okay, so um, we're talking about supplements with a G. The G plan is the next is the next most comprehensive plan that's available to you under supplements. So, if we look at Original Medicare, it's got those gaps in it, like we talked about, and one of those gaps is the two hundred and twenty-six dollar deductible for for Part B, Part B, right? So, let's let's say. You go to, let, we'll take an extreme example. You go to a provider and he wants to charge you $1,226 for the visit. Just say that. Um, you pay your deductible, $226. After that, it's an 80 20 split, right? So you would pay $200, and if Medicare allowed it to be $1,000, um, and Medicare would pay $800. So $800 plus $200 and you have the 226, I'm sorry, 800 plus 200 and 226. That puts you on the, on the hook for 426. If you had a G plan, you'd still have to pay the 226, but the $200 would be covered. And any time you went back to that provider, you would not have to pay anything. So I hope that's clear. You have to meet that, that deductible for Part B. If you went to the emergency room and stayed in the hospital, you wouldn't worry about the 226 because that's not a deductible for Part B. That would be covered under Part A 
of Medicare, and that is a $1,600 deductible, but the G plan covers that. So it fills in all the gaps except for that 226 deductible. I hope, that's, I hope that makes sense. If not, you can call me. Okay. So plans, not parts. All right. Are any other questions for me? If you do, we'll give you a, a moment, but we won't stay on too long. We're good? All right. Thanks, Liz. That was easy.